In the year 1995, a brother who was working in a Chinese city near the North Korean border called me. The phone call was about a request to help a North Korean believer to escape. So I called them on a local landline, for this was before cell phones. And I arranged to have lunch together with the North Korean believers. As I arrived, four elderly men greeted me. The oldest was 79 years old, so four old seniors had come out. And my first question was, why do you want to leave this place? Surprisingly, the old man said, I want to worship freely. Not really having anything more to say, I asked him, When would you like to leave? Earlier the better. How many people are there? Sixty-five of us. All adults? No, we have children as well, like my granddaughter. The rumor is that we were all going to be taken to the prison camp. I understand. I will help you. But then he said, wait. Sorry? Wait. Could I go ask God, then make my decision? Yes, of course. I couldn't deny him of any prayer, so I said, go ahead. He walked away slowly. In about ten minutes, he came back dragging his feet. What's wrong? Already his voice was different. I've asked him. Dear God, this pastor Lee from America says he will help us. Should we go with him? God's response was, Do you think I left you in this land because I'm powerless? Upon hearing this, the old man asked, You mean, is it your will that we are beaten here? Of course. God, you mean, is it your will that we are to starve here? Of course. I'm asking because we will all be taken to the prison camps. You're asking me as if I did not know? The old man could only reply. After he told me the story and before we parted our ways, I wanted to give him a hug, but these people weren't used to hugs. So I bowed down on my knees instead. As I knelt down, I saw his toe coming through his worn shoes. I kissed his toe. As I started to weep, I felt something fall on my neck. The old man was crying as well. I stood up and we said our goodbyes again. I said, farewell. He said, what kind of goodbye is that? You should have said, See you in heaven. Yes, I will see you in heaven. With that said, I turned and started walking away. Then I heard his voice from the back. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? A few years later, I went back to that place and met the same taxi driver again. The driver asked me, do you remember me? So I said, well, not really. Did you come a few years ago and meet the old seniors? I said, ah, yes. And tears began rolling down his cheeks as he told me what had happened. They were all dragged away. Six younger men who resisted and fought back were beaten and killed. The other 59 were forced into prison camps where they suffer through disease, starvation, and beatings over the next five years and eventually all died. Not one survived. People who have kept their faith, the kind of people whose heart's desire is just to be able to sing freely to God, what should we do for them? What can we do 